Kevin, for the third time now. Game one, both players have used their... Both players have used their restarts, so that means that this game will have to be played on, and there is nothing that we can do to stop it. A little bit of lag at the start. I don't know what's going on here. It seems really odd. Ah, okay, we've got a little pause. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there, but either way, we are back with Clash of the Titans Game 1 uh, between Jordan23 and the Viper. Exciting stuff indeed. A little bit taken away, or the excitement a little bit taken away by the two restarts we just had. But this game will have to be played on and hopefully it is going to be a decent game at that. Obviously we do have a Hun war here. Jordan23 in grey as Huns up to the north of the map and down to the very south of the map in red. I've just put team colors on so we can see Jordan a bit better. We do have the Viper also playing as Huns. Jordan 23 to clarify now in blue as I turn team colors on uh, so that we can actually see what he's doing, see where he is on the map. As gray is an incredibly difficult color to spot, at least for me anyway. Um, so obviously it just makes it easier to keep an eye on the minimap and see if Jordan is moving any units around that we don't necessarily see. So either way, obviously We've had two restarts already, and I think, actually, this is probably the best map Jordan's had so far. He has got a good amount of cliff on the front here. He's got an open patch at the front that could be easily walled off with military buildings. And the right side, fairly clustered as well, so not going to be too difficult for him to defend that. And I think that's much better for him. His wood, on the other hand, not so ideal. He does have a wood patch at the back. And that is, of course, next to that lake. So that's not going to last forever. It's not going to be as ideal as if that lake wasn't there. Otherwise, he has got wood on the front, but it's a bit hilly. It's also very sparse, and that's never ideal. So we'll see if Jordan does put a second lumber camp up on the front here. He probably will, but for now, he will take the wood in the back. And that's not going to last forever. So late, later on in the game, uh, especially in the castle age, Jordan might have a bit of issue securing his wood here i feel especially because there's these little lakes and they really are a real real pain for viper though well his wood's looking a little bit better he has got a larger wood on the right hand side which is ideal for him he's also got a wood on the front which isn't so nice because their uh, archers and crossbow for instance could hit from the back of that and other than that i mean he's got a wood on the far left but it's quite a long way away so both of them not with perfect wood here, not with the most ideal wood positions. And also these lakes, as I say, causing a little bit of an issue, making it more difficult to wall up. Obviously, you've got to be aware that units can get around here. And so they're going to have to palisade that up in their walls. So extremely important stuff for them there. Either way, though, they can't restart. So they're going to have to make do with what they've got. And straight away, we can see that Viper has the three villagers on the wood there. And we have Jordan 23 with the 4. So perhaps we could see a Dark Age rush from Jordan 23 here. He could build some militia and go forwards with them. And we'll see if Viper scouts out his wood here or not. Obviously the gold here for Jordan is on the front. But it's not too bad. I mean, he can wall this off at the left side and across the front here to keep that nice and safe. But usually four villagers can very much indicate that a Dark Age rush is going to be incoming. And uh, perhaps that will be the case from Jordan already. We can see it's almost at 6.30 mark. He's got the resources that he's going to need. We'll see what he does. And yeah, Barracks going straight down on the front there. And he is going to start to get a bit aggressive during the Dark Age. Viper on the other hand. Two farms going down already, just transitioning a fourth villager to wood now, but definitely not going to be making a Dark Age rush with militia at all here. There is not a chance about it, unless he does scout that barracks and decides to put up a barracks to defend himself with. So we'll see what he does when he scouts this. It looks like he's going to head into that direction now. He's not actually found where Jordan is yet, but it looks like he's going to head straight past this barracks. And is he going to do it? Nope, he's going to go straight over to the right-hand side. So Viper, still completely unaware that Jordan23 will be making a drush here. And if he does scout his main gold, he will, of course, see that that 10 gold is missing from the gold mine. And we'll see what happens. If Viper gets too close to the TC, could find himself losing that. But it looks like now he may scout the barracks. It's so close. No, he's going to go back. And he will find the main gold, which, of course, is going to tell him that a drush is incoming. He will have checked those gold piles there. He now knows... A drush is on the way. Viper, though, is up to feudal already. 
he is going up on 22 population expected taking that deer on the right side why not they're very close to his tc and uh, probably going to be getting ready to defend from this fairly soon jordan three militia in the barracks right now and he's going to want to send them over because viper will be up to the feudal age very quickly and there he goes let's see what damage he can do with this it's going to be really important that he makes this drush worthwhile Viper now sending those villagers right the way over to the left hand side to take that wood. It's a long way from the town center and that is a risky lumber camp right there. Possibly going to be really difficult for him to defend later on. But the fact that his gold is up here as well, he will really want to focus on keeping this area safe. And that is going to be so crucial to him during the later stages of the game, especially when cavalry archers start coming in because they're going to be so much more versatile, so much more uh, maneuverable even. Going to make it very easy for Jordan to hit and run this section of the map. He hasn't, however, scouted it. So he doesn't know exactly where the Viper's taking his second lumber camp now. He does know his main gold is over there, though, but Jordan's in. Let's see what damage he can do here. Just getting a little bit of town centre fire. And uh, Jordan just going to be trying to disrupt these villagers as much as he can. Not necessarily trying to kill villagers. Obviously, that is a bonus, but... Viper nicely done, quickly walling that off and Jordan's going to be completely denied now. And if he doesn't make any use of these militia at all, then Viper's uh, stable here, making a few scouts no doubt, will be able to take them out pretty quickly, pretty easily. And that is going to be bad news for Jordan, a little bit of wasted resources, especially once some archers start coming out as the militia really won't be able to stand up to them at all. Jordan then, not taking any risks at all. He has walled across this left side and the front, kind of like how I thought it would be, actually. And, of course, towards his TC here, creating a little bit of a funnel, keeping his eco safe. And that gold is in a nice position for him. It is nice and safe, and he is taking uh, quite a bit of gold now. So we'll probably see an archery range, two archery ranges coming up once he reaches the feudal age. The Viper, though, going straight out with scouts, and Jordan isn't feudal yet, so he's unable to get a spearman just yet. Jordan would be in a good position now, or should really, move these militia over to his berries to keep them nice and safe, as the scouts coming in from the Viper will be able to see what he can see. Uh, he doesn't actually know the berries are here. Of course, berries are a great um, resource to locate or target in the feudal age uh, with your scouts. They do do a lot of damage to villagers at this stage when they when they get up and get that extra plus two attack. So Jordan going to be confronted with the Viper here on this right side. He has got his militia in place and that is enough to potentially deter the Viper for now. But Jordan letting his army slip a little bit there. Losing quite a bit of HP on that militia already. And man, he's bringing his uh, villagers in to fight. Not going to leave anything to chance here. Does not want to end up getting caught out. But Viper just hitting and running, hitting and running, keeping Jordan preoccupied as Jordan brings over a spearman. And that should be enough to keep Viper away for now. Of course, he's not going to get in on the left side at all as that is fully walled up. Two archery ranges and a blacksmith for Jordan now. And that is expected. I'm going to be adding in some archers, but no, he's not. He's going to be going up to the castle age first in a very interesting move from Jordan here. Of course, Drush Fast Castle, something that is certainly a legit strategy. And of course, Jordan here managing to wall up so well, pulling that one off very nicely. And it looks like he is going to go with the Fast Castle here, transitioning a lot of villagers over to gold now, and perhaps three, maybe four archery ranges to pump out those cavalry archers. Viper, on the other hand, committing quite heavily to scouts here. And that could be pretty risky for him, actually. He is still a long way from getting up to the Castle Age. He's stopped scout production, but now researching bloodlines just to give his scout an extra bit of vigor. But even so, that's a lot of food that he has spent there. And Jordan, scouting out the front of Viper's base, can see he's gone up to two archery ranges. But you've got to remember that archers... At the moment, without fletching, are going to get so, so put down by any um, by any cavalry archers that Jordan's going to be able to produce. Jordan, though, is taking quite a bit of a risk here as the Viper coming in now with these scouts. Of course, if he does get through, if he does make a run for it, he will do a lot of damage. Viper 
well, sorry, Jordan even, forced to put up a watchtower back here to defend his economy. If Viper gets through, then that is going to be pretty bad news for Jordan. He could pick off some villagers, but he will be up to the castle age in just a few seconds time. He's on 92, 93% now, and as soon as that castle age upgrade comes in, cavalry archers going to be on the way out. So there we go, up to the castle age, and Viper now going to have to do what damage he can. As Jordan's going to be adding in those cavalry archers, it's going to be incredibly close. The tower on that gold, going to keep Jordan nice and safe for the time being. And Viper going to be struggling here to really do a lot of damage. Viper, uh, sorry, Jordan has got quite a bit of resources in the bank. But I think Viper could probably do quite a bit of damage if he goes for the villagers. First cavalry archers coming out and fletching is done as well. So short work going to be made of these archers. Uh, Jordan can get back to taking his gold. Viper was not able to do the damage there. And Jordan now... Really going to be pushing out with this extra, well, with these cavalry archers. He's got a lot of resources to spend and, you know, not going to even bother making an extra TC for now. He is going to get all out on the military just to make sure that he can uh, take the, well, push the Viper back and regain some map control. Viper then still feudal and he is going to have to make a lot of archers here because if he doesn't, then he might end up having to a really hard time defending. He can't just let cavalry archers walk into his base. As I said before, this side here with the wood, this gold, it is very exposed. Cavalry archers on this hill are going to do a lot of damage to these villagers. And the Viper now forced to put up watchtowers in defense. It is not an ideal situation for him to be in at all. As he's trying to scramble to get up to the castle age now. A lot of archers out for Viper though. And even though he is dealing with feudal archers, Jordan 23 is cavalry archers here still going to go down as Viper is massed up. However, Jordan 23 just researching Bodkin Arrow, giving him that range advantage. Nice micro from Jordan there, clinging to that hill as well, being able to pick off a few villagers, uh, sorry, uh, archers downhill. Jordan though, got to be careful. Don't want to get too close to the tower there and lose units unnecessarily. But right now, I think Jordan could break through this palisade pretty quickly and find his way into the Viper's base without a problem at all. If he did do that, he would be in a great position. Coming in on the right-hand side instead, Viper forced to put up a watchtower on his wood. And I know for a fact that the Viper is not a player who likes to play defensively like this. He is going to want to be the aggressor. He's going to be the one who's doing the damage. Instead, he's forced to coop, well, sort of stick at home and uh, be raided. A couple of villagers, well, one villager going down on that watchtower there. But again, forcing the Viper to build watchtowers, forcing him to spend villager time taking stone. And Jordan just going to keep the raiding up wherever he can, however much he can. Viper finally up to the castle age. He has got a population advantage, though, which does mean he either has more villagers or more military. And I think it's the, the latter. He does have a lot more military out at the moment. A lot of archers from the Viper here. And if he micros this well, he's still going to have an easy time taking out these cavalry archers. He does have, so to say, the critical mass of archers that Viper needs here. So Viper's just holding out now. He's on about 25%, 30% up to the castle age. He'll lose a bit of his army. And the score tipped in favor of Jordan at the moment. Jordan going to keep that raiding up, keep that harassment up wherever he can. And Viper going into four archery ranges now on the front of his base. So we're going to see Crossbow straight away as soon as he goes up to the Castle Age. Bodkin Arrow as well. And then most likely a switch into Cavalry Archers also. Uh, Jordan's got to be a little bit cautious though. I mean, there's a lot of archers out on the field. And they're going to be a lot of Crossbow in just a few moments time. So really got to be cautious of that. And I think the Viper now going to be able to defend for the time being. He has got, as I say, a good mass of units. Jordan going to push in though. And if he does time this well, he could do a lot of damage before the Viper actually gets to Castle. But as I say, outnumbered massively. And he doesn't actually have bloodlines on these cavalry archers here. So that is something that he is missing and something that he really needs to get if he is to go for the all-out cavalry archer war. The Viper then is up to the castle age now. Crossbow on the way. Bodkin Arrow as well. And we'll probably see him switch to cavalry archers now. Worth noting as well, he already has bloodlines. So his cavalry archers are going to be more formidable than Jordan's once he starts pumping them out. So this is a pretty close game so far. Having a look at Jordan Zico, he's not adding in, adding, added in that second TC yet. He's not taking any stone. So that TC is not going to be going up at all. And that is something that he's got to be very cautious of. Because if he does need that third, second and third TC coming up, then he needs to make sure he's got the stone to do that. Of course, not really his priority at the moment. 
making sure he's got enough military is going to be that priority. But the Viper has got the stone in the bank. He's, in fact, still taking the stone now. So we could see a castle from him eventually, if not two TCs straight away. But even so, if we have a look. Viper's got the Bloodlines upgrade. He has got plus two attack, plus one defense on the Cavalry Archers. The only thing that Jordan has that is sort of better in this situation is the two Mangonels. It's going to be very difficult for anyone to micro or out micro two Mangonels. Three, in fact, now. And that is something that Jordan will be able to use to great advantage. Viper, though, starting to make mangonels of his own, and you can't really go to a, a to a fight without a mangonel if your opponent has them. You just have to have them. Viper, though, really nice getting out this uh, knight now, and he's going to take out one mangonel, probably won't get the second. That knight going to go down, but one, one mangonel for nothing, and the viper might continue to add a few more knights in a little later on, just to make sure that he can deal with the mangonels a, a little bit easier. Of course, a Manganel of his own, a great counter to Manganels themselves, so that is always worth noting. And Viper coming in now, wide formation on these crossbows, very well aware that this Manganel is on the field. Going to take pot shots where they can, Jordan losing out already. And micromanagement now is going to be so, so crucial as Jordan's bringing in yet another Manganel. Let's see what is going to happen here. Viper going to send a few cavalry archers over to the left side, looking to pick off some villagers. Jordan taking a little bit of stone, finally. Looks like we're going to have... Oh, man. Jordan going to take out that first Manganel from the Viper, no problem. He has got three on the field now. Jordan's going to push forward, chasing these crossbow down. And we all know the cavalry archers are going to be much superior in a crossbow fight. But Jordan with three Manganels could do serious damage. Another Manganel from the Viper though. And Jordan really wants to focus that down. Man, taking massive losses there. Not focusing that Manganel down at all. And Jordan lost so much. The Viper as well though. Taking a big Manganel shot there. And it's going to be going towards, I think, Jordan's favor here. As he does push in with the rest of these Manganels. However, Viper in the back of Jordan's base. Doing a little bit of damage to Jordan's economy. But Jordan continuing to push forwards. Viper does not seem to have the amount of military he needs here. No way to really fight against these two Manganels. No more Manganels coming out of his own, but a castle going up on this hill in defense. And I think that is a great position for that. It's going to cover this wood. It will cover this gold, and it will keep Jordan out of his base with those Manganels. But man, Jordan taking a great victory there, and he is a good 300, 400 score in the lead right now. And I think Jordan going to be putting up that second TC any moment now as well. There we go on the right hand side. Putting that TC up a bit of an interesting location. To be honest with you actually. He's going to be pretty hard pressed to find any good locations for TCs. He can't put them on this wood here. It's too much of a hill. He can't really put it on the gold because it's hill again hilly. So Jordan really unfortunate with the locations there. Oh man. Unlucky on those on the Manganels. Two going down for Vipers 1. Uh, but yeah, and looking with his map, really not so great in the location for his TCs. He's not really got many options there to, available to him. But Jordan taking a little bit of an earlier advantage. The Viper, though, with that castle now and a good 30 population behind. Sorry, 20 population behind. Jordan continuing to pump out those cavalry archers and university up. So I believe ballistics will be researched now. Jordan going to keep pushing in with those cavalry archers, using those mangonels as well, not letting go of that mangonel production. I think that's really crucial. Viper just about to pull out a mangonel, but is the Siege Workshop going to go down? Yes, it is. No more mangonels for you. Jordan targeting that Siege Workshop down. I think that is such a great choice by him. Targeting the Siege Workshop, a brilliant decision. Going to prevent Viper from making any more mangonels. Going to give him one less counter to his own. And Jordan there trying to raid on the right side, getting taken down by the Viper's Cavalry Archer. And upgrades wise, they are still neck and neck. No plus two defense on the Cavalry Archers yet. And I think that's something that is probably going to be weighted on a little bit. We can't see either of them researching that now. But as I say, this entire game, Viper's been forced to play very defensively. He's got three watchtowers and a castle in his base. So he is really turtling up at the moment. 
Finding a second TC location on this right hand side and uh, that is it for now. He too, without really a good location to put his TC, is one up on this hill. But man, Jordan's going to come in with cavalry archers now. Looks like he's slightly fighting uphill here, but he may just have the numbers. It's hard to say, but if Jordan gets this, he can delay this TC from the Viper. Looks like Viper's going to push him back though. It's hard to say, yeah. Viper's going to push him back, but man, Jordan, if he'd have had a few more units over there at that, st at that moment in time... These villagers would have gone down on that town centre and uh, it would have been uh, pretty difficult for the Viper to take that hill back if Jordan had kept rallying there but just managing to pull that off and the scores now starting to close in once again. Jordan losing a slight lead that he had. Viper's TC on this right side. He's up to three TCs now. Jordan on the two I believe. We can see yeah just two TCs for him. A really unfortunate map to say the least, but Jordan really not coming in with the best of fights at the moment. Losing a lot of cavalry archers, but double Maganel shot for the for Jordan there. Viper going to take quite a lot of damage on those cavalry archers, allowing Jordan to push in. And if Jordan if Jordan doesn't get contested here, the Manganels could end up taking down this TC as well. Already going to start firing on that, and Jordan now needs to keep this hill, needs to keep the numbers, and the Viper in a terrible position to push up here. Jordan just needs to keep rallying to this hill, and that TC will go down. Siege Workshop for the Viper on the right-hand side, desperately trying to get out a Manganel of his own then, after losing the one on the front. And bringing in a Knight now as well, just to try and deal with these Manganels as best he can. Jordan's got to be careful, going a bit too close to the TC there. Doesn't look like he's going to have an easy time taking it down, that's for sure. Viper with four uh, archery ranges, continually producing cavalry archers. Worth noting, uh, they're both on four archery ranges at the moment. That could go up fairly soon. Their economy is starting to inflate. And we'll probably see light cavalry hussars added in fairly soon as well. So exciting stuff here. Viper forced into a very defensive position and that's something that I think he's not so comfortable with. Jordan probably going to be pretty happy with the fact he's got a bit of map control now. Going up with a fourth TC on this right hand side. So his economy really going to be starting to accelerate very soon. Though I'm a little bit worried that he's not going to have the food income at the moment to keep villager production up at all times. We'll see about that. But of course, once that initial rush of villagers goes forwards, once you get up to, you know, the 130-ish villager mark, you can stop that villager production and your food just going to pile up so massively. And that, of course, is when you start the Imperial upgrade, when you start the, uh, well, not necessarily start the Imperial upgrade, but when you start the flood of uh, light cavalry and hussars that can come in. Viper then making an attack on this right-hand side. Jordan going to respond very quickly indeed with a much larger mass of cavalry archers here, I feel. We have a quick look. He's got 36 on the field, 37 now. The Viper's got 36 as well, but he is... Um, a little bit split up at the moment. Half his army down protecting his base, the other half on the right side looking to raid. And Jordan, although he does have the same amount of numbers at this stage, making a little bit more use of them. But Viper now can sort of see that Jordan's whole army is on this right side. Going to come in at the bottom. And a very quick response from Jordan there. Bringing these units, or well, these villagers, inside of the TC. Two Manganels on this hill. If he gets a shot here, he could do huge damage. The Viper then, going to take a little bit of damage from the Manganels. And if he's not careful, he's going to take another big shot, man. That is bad news for him. He's going to take out these Manganels here. Fighting downhill, of course. Going to give him a little bit of an advantage. One final Manganel shot. And Viper gets cleared up. The scores, so, so close. Flitting back and forth. And Jordan there losing a few, or Viper even losing a few more cavalry archers. Looks like Jordan's coming forwards on the right hand side now with a castle. He is getting ready to push in. That is a sign of confidence. A forward castle is something that you only see if you're really confident that you're going to make a push that's going to work. And what a position that is. It is downhill, which is unfortunate for Jordan, but he is going to push in now with these cavalry archers by the looks of things. Sure, it's uphill, but he's going to keep that castle safe. He's going to raid the right Viper's gold. Two gold piles on this right-hand side. And John's going to be happy with that. But this castle, not only is it going to... It's downhill, which is obviously a downside. But the upside to it is that it will split the Viper's economy. 
It's going to split this TC off. It's going to alienate it from the rest of the Viper's base. And, of course, provide a good cover to this choke point. The castle then going up right now. Viper going to be forced back. But will Jordan get up to the Imperial Age first? He will indeed. He has clicked up right now. And the Viper is too far behind in terms of food to actually click up. So this castle is so good for Jordan at the moment. Sure, it's downhill. That doesn't matter, though, because he will be up to the Imperial Age first. He will be able to protect it. And that means that this TC is in jeopardy. We're talking about, um, you know, extra, ma not Magadels, extra Trebs coming out. And Jordan will be able to make the most of that. Really good micro from Jordan here. He is looking on top form at the moment. His numbers, his population even, just absolutely skyrocketing now. As Viper goes up to the Imperial Age as well. 53 cavalry archers for the Viper. And 54 for Jordan. Almost identical. But Jordan's raiding here does seem a lot more effective. He's got the Viper in a defensive position. And now switching into deathmatch mode almost. As he's coming forwards with the rams. Soon to be capped rams. Going to be upgrading those all important bracer upgrades. Chemistry. Uh, heavy cavalry archer. All of that good stuff. And the Viper, in response to Jordan's castle, putting one up himself. How far behind is he in the Imperial upgrades, though? Well, he's on 51%. Jordan's on 76. And that is enough time for Jordan to get a couple of castle, uh, a couple of trebs out and make the difference. Meanwhile, he's still claiming the land in the center, making sure that the Viper's going to be cooped into his base. No room to move. And Jordan expanding out on the left side and the right side of the map, taking those extra golds, taking those extra stones. But man, look how much gold he's taken at this stage. And lots of resources in the bank. He's nearly at population cap right now. And he is getting ready to push in the center of the map. Siege Workshop's going down. He will be researching Cap Ram in just a moment's time. But coming in at the moment with the Battering Rams there. Lots and lots of cavalry archers as well. Losing a lot of villagers. Well, the Viper is, that is. Trebuchet is coming out also, and he is going to be trying to deal with these castles from the Viper very, very shortly. Viper, though, up to the Imperial Age as well. And this castle from Jordan, no Trebs are coming out. So Viper could take the castle down from Jordan on the right-hand side. But Jordan now, Heavy Cavalry Archer, has been upgraded. Plus two defense, plus three attack. And he is going to make his way in. And, you know, if Jordan just does a run by here, if Jordan runs straight past this castle into the back of the Viper's economy... The Viper's going to lose a lot. He's going to lose a huge chunk back here as well. A lot of these villagers will get taken down. And Jordan now waiting on that cap ram upgrade by the looks of things. 95%. Viper though making a push on the right now. Switching to light cavalry very quickly indeed. Lots of rams coming forwards taking out this castle. And that castle for Jordan as I say it wasn't in the best position being downhill. But he didn't do enough to protect it it seems. Also unable to wall this up. He needs to get a wall up here quickly. Otherwise, these villagers will go down. And man, Jordan's going to lose a big chunk of his eco there on that left-hand side. However, more pressing matters on, on the right-hand side, even. <laughs> more pressing matters on the left-hand side. Huge amounts of uh, cavalry archers here. Trebs forwards from Jordan as well, starting to whittle away at those, um, at those castles. But the thing that concerns me is that Viper's starting his raiding now with those uh, light cavalry. And, you know, he has got those stables up on that left-hand side. He will be upgrading to Hazar fairly soon, as soon as he can afford the food cost, actually. His economy is pretty messed up for that. But it is a big deal for the Viper at the moment to get that raiding going and really catch up in economy. Scores so close. Viper just taking a lead. But Jordan about to push in on this front side. And if, if the Viper loses this castle, it will be an uphill battle on here. So he really can't lose this hill. Jordan's going to have a very easy time pushing in if he does. And oh man, Jordan, don't go back. Those cavalry archers going to go back. And man, Viper can come forwards and take these uh, trebuchets out now. Really messy from Jordan there going back with those cavalry archers. It's enough though, I think, to take this castle. One more shot and he might do it. But Jordan coming forwards now. Massive losses for both of them. Trebuchet, why are you no fire? <laughs> He's just stopped. He could have taken the castle. And whoever wins this battle is going to be in a much more advantageous position. Both of them neck and neck on upgrades. Actually, Jordan doesn't have the final defense upgrade. And that is costing him a little bit here as the cap rams are coming in to try and soak up the arrow fire. But Viper wins that fight. And man, he is going to come back here in a big way by the looks of things. Cap rams coming in on the right side. 
light cavalry raiding as well, but you've got to bear in mind now that Jordan does have the Hussar research already. Population though, Jordan on 156, the Viper on 188. And Jordan is starting to fall behind. That massive loss on the front here was huge for him. He was too late to bring those uh, cap rams in. And the Viper now has just finished his Hussar upgrade as well. Upgrades for the Viper much further ahead. Well, not much further, but further ahead also. And Jordan's economy now left wide open. The Viper had made his push and he made it well. He has really taken the lead all of a sudden, really turned it around from being in that defensive position to pushing out and starting that raiding. It's going to be massive for him. He's going to do a lot of damage to Jordan's economy and pushing forwards now with these cavalry archers as well. Quite a long first game indeed, but these guys very evenly matched it seems. And Jordan just doesn't seem to have the cavalry archers out at the moment. He's not going to be able to fight this army from the Viper head on. As Viper continues to raid left side, and raid the right side. And with these stables back here, just continually flooding those hussars out. Wow. Viper's going to make a big indent into Jordan's economy here. If he just runs these cavalry archers back here, a lot of villages for Jordan will go down. But he's just everywhere. He's all over the place. Jordan with castles up to defend his eco, but starting to get whittled down now by the Viper's uh, trebuchets. And the Viper, for once, not really investing that heavily into the siege here. He's really focusing on his raiding. He's really focusing on that cavalry archer production still. Uh, finally, just getting up a couple of siege workshops on the front. I mean, imagine I imagine we will see siege ram fairly soon. I think cap ram was done from the Viper, so he's got the food now to upgrade to the Siege Ram. But Jordan running these villages forward, not sure what he's trying to achieve there. Not sure at all. But that is not a good sign for Jordan at the moment, and he is falling behind a thousand score deficit at the moment. As the Viper's economy, uh, not the economy, army even, is looking pretty strong at the moment, just continuing to raid in, and Jordan's economy is left very, very open. So Viper now probably going to move forwards fairly soon. Siege Ram has been done. So he will be producing those Siege Rams fairly soon. Going to be soaking up a lot of arrow fire from Cavalry Archers. And oh man, the Viper's getting in here again with the top of this hill to his advantage. Going to be taking down a lot of these units. And Jordan, this is a bad sign. Starting to add in elite skirmishes. And you know you've got a problem when you're starting to add elite skirmishes in. Because Jordan's gold at the moment, 165. Viper 1,200 at the moment. So that is uh, going to be really difficult for Jordan now. He's going to be forced to produce a lot of uh, elite skirmishes. It's not an ideal situation to be in. And the Viper's raiding just continuing on. Treb's coming forwards and there's the GG from Jordan. Well played indeed. And man, what a first game. That was so incredibly good. Jordan looked like he had Viper right in the palm of his hand. Sure, the scores were close, but he had a lot of advantages. He was up to the Imperial Age first. He was he had Viper on the defensive, but the Viper managed to hold out, managed to make the right push at the right time, especially here, taking out most of Jordan's cavalry archers. And from there, starting his raiding, continuing that cavalry archer production, and he just started to accelerate ahead. And really well played indeed. Going to come out right now.